This summer may feel hotter than usual because for many parts of the world, it is. A new report from Axios notes that from deadly fires in the U.S. to high temperatures in Scandinavia, this year's global heat wave is so pervasive, it's surprising scientists. According to the report, this sort of record-breaking weather is linked to human-caused climate change, and we will likely see more of it. Joining me now is the author of that report, Andrew Friedman. He's a science editor for Axios. Andrew, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So from fires in the U.S. and the Arctic Circle to high temperatures around the world, why are we seeing so many extremes this summer? Well, you have natural weather patterns that are working, right? You have the natural variability in the background. And then when the natural variability, so when the jet stream gets to a position that it favors a certain type of extreme, then you see long-term climate trends added to that natural component. And we're really loading the dice that we're gonna have an unprecedented heat wave rather than just an ordinary heat wave, or an unprecedented amount of rain rather, to, rather than the more gentle amount of rain that you would have had a few decades ago. We're really seeing the signal of climate change emerge within our day-to-day, week-to-week, and season-to-season weather. Yeah, let's dive into that a little bit more deeply here. You wrote that scientists have found a clear link between climate change and extreme heat in Europe. What more can you tell us about that? Yeah, so they examined basically uh, a number of computer models and observational records and compared uh, what would have happened in this case had we not been emitting greenhouse gases from fossil fuels for all these decades and, you know, what the climate would have done and what the likelihood is that this heat wave would have occurred. What they found was the heat wave that hit the UK, Scandinavia, uh, Western Europe and and the Arctic Uh, was two to five times more likely to occur in today's climate versus had we not been emitting all these greenhouse gases. So we're loading the dice for these extreme events. In addition, they also found that in the Arctic, in the Norwegian Arctic, uh, which you typically need a fleece uh, jacket to visit at this time of year, It's been in the low 90s, which is uh, unprecedented in the historical record and none of the computer models, unless they incorporated greenhouse gases, the computer models just didn't simulate it. Wow, that is just remarkable to think about. Well, I've had conversations with meteorologists who've cautioned about this, but how noteworthy is it that you have scientists who are drawing links between climate change and specific weather events? So, you know, scientists tend to be a cautious bunch. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, on, heat, on particular extreme events, there's a lot we can say now. There's a lot of research that's been going on. So particularly when it comes to heat waves, like we've been seeing, and extreme precipitation events, we really know what's happening. It's really basic physics of uh, when you move uh, the climate a little bit warmer, the odds of warmer extremes go up by a lot. When you make the climate a little bit warmer, you end up putting more water vapor in the air, and that's available for storms. And then you end up getting heavier precipitation dropping out of those storms. Um, When you go into some other types of extreme events, like hurricanes and uh, local events like tornadoes, there's a lot of active research going on, but there's not as much definitive things that we can say. So because we've been seeing um, such stuck jet stream patterns where these weather events are happening day after day after Mm -hmm. day after day in the same area, and because they've been mostly heat related and mostly precipitation related, uh, the scientists have been uh, a lot more confident than you might otherwise expect. And these are trends that they expected to emerge from the climate maybe in a, in a, a decade or two. Um, but these are being seen now. And you know that worries many of the people who are looking further down the road at how much more, you know, how much warmer we are going to get. So given all of that, what can people do to slow the effects of global warming? Well, the most obvious thing is to, uh, you know, cut the emissions of greenhouse gases. That's on a state, local, regional, national level. Um, People, uh, you know, an individual might not have a ton of say in that, but they can make personal choices. 
Also, though, what really needs to be happening and what is happening in many U.S. cities and states is to really prepare for the impacts of climate, to make our cities more heat wave resistant. Uh, everything from Los Angeles painting some streets white to have a lower urban heat island to opening more heat shelters. I mean, L.A. set their all-time high temperature record of 111 on July 6th. So the, these are ways that cities need to prepare for what is inevitably going to happen already, just because of the climate change in the pipeline, while other people and policymakers uh, work to address the climate change on a more long-term basis. It's really about uh, resilience combined with uh, what is fan the fancy term is mitigation, but really we're just talking about uh, working to try to reduce the severity of climate change over the long term. All right, Andrew Friedman with Axios. Andrew, thanks very much. Thank you for having me.